Hello everyone, my name is Ms. Glass from Thurgood Marshall Elementary. I'm a second grade teacher, go Bull Pups. And I'm excited to be here with all of you today to teach and to learn with all of you. All of your teachers really miss you right now and wish we could be at school together, but we're staying healthy and safe, which is exactly what you're doing right now. So we're gonna get ready to learn together. Um, today, if you'd like to respond to my questions in your own home language, you are welcome to do that. All right, to get ready to learn today, we are going to have to use our imaginations because normally we are at school surrounded by all of our friends and I'm there with all of my students, but right now we're going to have to just imagine. Now, if you have someone at home that you want to be your partner during this reading lesson today, you can bring them in and they can be your partner or maybe you have a favorite stuffy that you want to be your partner and they can come on in and be your partner or Maybe you wanna be like me and just have some imaginary friends because I'm going to imagine that all of you are right here in this classroom learning with me today. All right, to get ready to learn, we're gonna take some deep breaths. We're gonna breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth three times. Ready, let's do the first one. In through your nose, out through your mouth. That felt good, let's do it again. Ready, in through your nose and out through your mouth. One last time, in through your nose and out through your mouth. <sighs> All right, we are ready to learn. All right, today we are going to read some nonfiction. And you have practiced lots of nonfiction reading and learning all the time in school. And today we're going to do some more practicing. You have already practiced visualizing at home. You have practiced learning from nonfiction books and you've also practiced wondering as you're reading. So today, um, we know that nonfiction books give true information about people, places, and things. And today we are going to talk about something very exciting. Today, we are going to talk about expository nonfiction. And expository nonfiction is true information, right? Unlike stories that we might read that are made up, um, expository, expository nonfiction has all true information on it. So today, and for the next little while, we're gonna be reading books that are all expository nonfiction. Um, in the past, you've read some other nonfiction books, as you might remember. And we're gonna jump in today um, with our very first expository nonfiction book. All right, so today um, we are going to be reading this book called Snails. And when we are reading the book Snails, before we even jump into the book, I want you to do a little bit of thinking here. So the book is Snails. It is right here on our title page, Snails, and it is written by Monica Hughes. And before we jump into this book, I wanna know what you already know about snails. So right now I want you to think, what do you know about snails already? Where do they live? What do they do? What do you know? Take a second to think. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe you're like me and you know that snails live outside because maybe you have seen a snail outside. And just the other day, I saw a snail right outside my apartment. I was walking up the steps and all of a sudden, <gasps> I stopped and there was a snail on the ground. And I saw it and it was just slowly oozing along on the pathway. So something that I already know about snails is that they live nearby me. Um, maybe you also thought of, maybe you've seen snails in other places. Maybe you've seen snails um, in a park. Or maybe you've seen a snail at your playground at school or maybe in a backyard. So we already know a little bit about snails and their habitat. And if you remember habitat from reading about insects and spiders, habitat is where animals live. So we know a little bit about snail habitat because we know they live outside. All right, we are going to jump into our book and we're gonna start off here right after our title page, right here with our very first part of the book. And this book is called The Table of Contents. Sometimes it's just called The Contents, like in this book, Contents, but a table of contents is a text feature. 
So a text feature like a table of contents um, has lots of information on it. What it has is it tells the readers all the topics that they're going to find in the book and it tells them the page numbers where you can find those chapters. So each chapter is all about one topic. And so you can see the chapter titles are listed in your table of contents. Now, if you have a packet at home, you can look in your packet and you'll see this. But if you don't have it, that's okay. I'm gonna show it to you. But we're gonna read the table of contents together to find out what's in this book. The first chapter we can see right here is snails. Kinds of snails, snail bodies, snail tentacles, snail trails, looking for snails, new snails, food for snails, snails in danger, snails in winter, glossary, and index. So after reading this table of contents, what do you think we're gonna learn about snails in this book? Take a moment to think. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe you noticed in the table of contents, you saw there was a chapter title that said snail bodies. And you said, we're gonna learn about snails bodies. Or maybe you saw the chapter called food for snails and you thought, hmm, maybe we're gonna find out about the food that snails eat. All right, I've got a quiz for you. All right, I want you to take a look at the contents. And my question for you is this, just looking at the contents, what page do you think we can find out more about snails and what they do in the winter time? What page would that be on? Take a look at your table of contents here. Did you find it? It's right here and the chapter title is Snails in Winter starts on page 22. So you can use the table of contents to find wherever a chapter is that you are looking for. The page number tells you right here and you can turn to that page in the book. All right, it is time for us to read the book together. All right, let's get started. The first chapter is called snails. Snails are small animals that live outside. They have soft, slimy bodies and hard shells. Slimy means soft and slippery and sometimes gooey feeling. We can see this says shell and body. All right, our next chapter is called Kinds of Snails. There are many different kinds of snails. Some snails live on land. Other snails live in water. So based on what we've read so far, what have you learned about snails? Take a moment to think, what have you learned so far? Maybe you're like me and you noticed that it taught us that snails have slimy bodies. Or maybe you noticed on this page that snails have different kinds of shells. Hmm. Let's keep reading. Snail bodies. A snail's body is called a foot. Foot. A snail can pull its foot into its shell. Snail tentacles. Snails have four tentacles on their heads. Two tentacles taste and smell. Two tentacles have eyes. Eye tentacle, tasting and smelling tentacle. Snail trails. Snails move very slowly. They slide along on trails of slimy mucus. And mucus is thick, gooey liquid. So now I want you to stop and think, what have you learned about snails in the part we just read? Take a moment to think. Hmm. 
Hmm. Maybe you said that snails' bodies, they're called a foot. Or maybe you remembered that snails slide smoothly on trails of slimy mucus. Let's keep reading. Looking for snails. Snails live in gardens. You might find some in a flower pot. You might find snails in some leaves. New snails. New snails hatch from round white eggs. And when you hatch, that means you come from an egg. Baby snails are very small. They have soft shells and bodies. This is eggs. The next chapter is called Food for Snails. Snails eat the leaves and flowers of dead plants. They eat growing plants too. Snails can be garden pests. Snails in danger. These snails are in danger. They have pulled their bodies inside their shells. Snails can make foam too. Foam keeps snails safe from predators. Here's the foam. And a predator is when an animal hunts another animal for food. All right, our next chapter is called Snails in Winter. Snails hibernate all winter. When you hibernate, that means that you sleep through the winter. They go inside their shells and close them with mucus. So now I want you to stop and think, what have you learned from this part of the book that we just read? Hmm. Hmm. Lots to learn. Maybe you just said that you learned that snails eat plants. Maybe you said that snails, when they're in danger, they make foam to scare away their predators. There was lots to learn in that section. All right, that is the end of where we are going to read today. And now it is time for us to go into a little book discussion. All right, the big question I have for you to start off our discussion is, what did you learn about snails from this book? Take a moment to think. So maybe you talked about how snails' bodies are called a foot, or maybe you talked about how snails have four tentacles, right? Two for their eyes and two for their sense of smell. There's lots to learn from this book. All right, my next question for you is, what are some things you are still wondering about snails? Take a moment to think about that. What do you still wonder? Maybe you're like me and you're wondering, how does the foam keep snails safe when they're in danger? Or maybe you're wondering, how big can snails get? Hmm, lots to wonder. All right, my last question for you during our class discussion here is, why do you think the author, Monica Hughes, wrote this book? Hmm. Take a moment to think about that. that Monica Hughes wrote this book because she thinks snails are cool. Maybe you think she wrote this book because she wants to teach kids like you about snails. Or maybe she wrote this book because she wants to teach kids science because science is cool. There's lots of reasons to write a book. Thanks for being in our class discussion. That was awesome. Now we're going to go into vocabulary. All right, everyone, welcome to our vocab portion of the day. Um, today we are going to take some words and ideas from our lovely book, Snails, 
and we are going to dive right into our chapter right here that tells us a little bit more about kinds of snails. I'm going to read it to you just to remind you. Kinds of snails. There are many different kinds of snails. Some snails live on land, other snails live in water. So in this chapter, we learn that there are different kinds of snails. And today, our vocab word for that part of the book is variety. Can you say that with me? The vocab word today is variety. All right, so when you have variety, that means that there are many different kinds of things. So we can use the word variety in lots of ways, not just snails. We know that snails, there's lots of different kinds of snails of where they live, but there's also variety all over the world. Like for example, when you look up in the sky on a cloudy day, you might see there is a variety of clouds in the sky because there's different kinds of clouds. Or maybe you're thinking, oh, there is a variety of hair color. Maybe you know someone with red hair or black hair or brown hair or gray hair. There's a variety of colors of hair. So variety shows up in all different places in our world. All right, we're gonna try something out. I want you to take a look at this right here. I brought with me my jar of markers. And in this jar of markers, I have a question for you. My question is, is there a variety of colors of markers in this jar? You're gonna answer that question using my sentence stem to answer that question. Hmm. Nice. A lot of you probably just said, there is a variety of colors in this marker jar because I see blue, green, yellow, pink, red. There's a variety of them. There's lots of different kinds. So we know that variety means many different kinds. What's the word again, everybody? It is variety. All right, our second vocab word also comes from the book Snails. And we're gonna dive right in here to our chapter called Snail Tentacles. In Snail Tentacles, we learned snails have four tentacles on their heads. Two tentacles taste and smell. Two tentacles have eyes. So our vocab word today for this chapter is characteristic. The word is characteristic. And a characteristic is something that describes something else. It gives details about something. So I want you to think, what are some characteristics of snails? In this chapter, it tells us there are snail tentacles. That's a characteristic of a snail. We're gonna stretch it a little bit bigger with something I like to eat. This right here is an orange. What is a characteristic of an orange? Hmm. Maybe you said it's roundish, or maybe you said it's orange, or maybe you said it's juicy. There's lots of characteristics of oranges. So today we learned two vocab words. Just wanna remind you, we learned variety, and we also learned characteristic. All right. Let's go back to our lesson. All right, everyone, now it is time for my favorite part of reading, which is reading. We actually get to read right now. So today you are going to read some nonfiction expository books. That means you're gonna read books about true information about people, places, or things. And if you don't have any nonfiction books at home, that's okay. I'm gonna list some resources down below in the links. And you can also look in your packet for more reading in there. But there are lots of ways you can read nonfiction at home. And I hope you can find something great to read today. Um, if you have those nonfiction books, you're welcome to read them. If you would like to read in your home language, you can read that. And I hope that you find a really cozy, comfortable place to read. I like to read in my living room on my couch all stretched out. Or maybe you like to read in your bed. Or maybe you like to read under a tree. But find a comfortable place to read for at least 20 minutes. I know that's a tiny amount of time and you're going to want to read way more than that. But read for at least 20 minutes today. And as you read, I want you to think about something. 
today when we were reading our book about snails, we talked a lot about text features. Now we talked about table of contents and we talked about chapter titles. So as you read today, I want you to look in your nonfiction expository books, I want you to look for some text features to help you learn more information from the books that you read. So let's get started with that right away. And I'm gonna look through my stack here. And with me today, hmm, what will I choose? Aha! Today, I've got a book that is a reference book with lots of information. This is a world atlas with all kinds of articles and things. I'm gonna settle into my book and I will see you again later this week. <laughs>